We spent two months with my wife and my five kids living in a converted school bus. And we spent two months on the road uh, doing a combination of some family time, some travel, some ministry work, and this is what I learned, especially in the context of being a Christian and relying on God for our daily bread. Welcome to All That Catholic Stuff. I'm Chris Moore. Being on a converted school bus for two months, I mean, it was this wild adventure. We saw some amazing things. We had some quality family time. Got to kind of just take a step back from normal life and reflect on things. But we definitely had some struggles too. I learned a number of things in my time just being able to reflect on what it was like to live in this school bus, this schoolie, for two months away from home, just packing the essentials, just the small little things that we could carry with us. It really taught me a lot about what it means to be a Christian and also the Lord's Prayer. The first thing it taught me is that, man, I want less stuff. I want less things. Like when we uh, packed up to live for two months on this school bus, uh, we could only bring a limited number of things. Like basically all of my clothes fit into a backpack and then we had some food that we brought and, you know, some bikes and just like random things like that. But like, there's not a lot of space. And so we needed to really limit the things that we brought with us. And that was an awesome process. Like it was almost therapeutic to be able to go through our house and be like, okay, here's the things that I actually need to survive for two months. And and to, to be able to realize like, man, I actually don't need as much stuff as I have. Like we have houses full of stuff and things, but really we don't really need all of that stuff. Kind of gets in the way, it's clutter. I've been traveling for the last 10 years of my life doing ministry and most of the time I'm walking through an airport with a guitar in one hand and I'm wearing a backpack and I'm carrying all the things that I need for that particular ministry trip. Sometimes it's up to two weeks at a time and I'm living out of a backpack. And so this isn't anything new for me personally, uh, other than like, well, this is a little bit different of a trip, you know, tra traveling in a school bus versus traveling in an airplane, living in hotels, right? And so, it, but it, the same exercise applied. Like, it was a wonderful experience to be able to just go through and be like, okay, I really don't need a lot of stuff. The other thing that I realized too is that when you have a house, there's lots of things that we're constantly cleaning. We have five kids. Our house is like, the people are always doing stuff, crafts, and like, there's always the floor to be swept and the counters to be clean and the sink and the toilet. Like, there's all stuff to clean. And what I absolutely loved, and I believe my, you know, my wife enjoyed this too, is that like, on a bus, it's like a limited amount of square footage. And so like, yeah, we, we're sweeping the bus out maybe 20 times a day, but that's really it. Like there's not a whole lot to have to clean on the bus. When you have a smaller space and when you have less things, there's less stress in your life, less distraction. And I just thoroughly appreciated that. Now on the flip side of that is when we returned home, like just having this overwhelming feeling of like, oh my goodness, like we've been living out of 150 square feet for the last two months and now we're returning back to our house and there's all these rooms and the kids will go from one room to another and leave their stuff everywhere and we're like constantly cleaning and picking up and asking them to like do stuff. And it's like, wow, there's just so much more work. And it's sort of interesting. It's like, well, like why? Like why do we have all of these more things to do to take up our time if we just chose to live more simply then we would, we would have so much more time to do other things in life. More time to pray or to read books or to spend time with our kids or to, to work or to do all the different things that we could be doing. The second thing that I learned is I was just really struck in reflecting about um, the Lord's Prayer and what it means to be a Christian and relying on God. See, when we travel in our bus, we have solar panels on the roof, and so we literally are relying on the sun to give us power. And if there's not enough sun, then we have to like ration like what we're able to do and charge with our, you know, inside of our bus. And it's just kind of like we, we realize like when in that Lord's Prayer, like give us this day our daily bread, like that constant every day we pray this, like give us, Lord, would you provide for us today? Not like with the sun and solar so that we could recharge our batteries, but also like finding water. Like we can only carry a limited amount of water with us on our school bus. And so like, like where, where are we going to find the next water source so we can fill up our buckets? Like give us this day, our daily bread or grocery stores. Like the, where we went in Northern Ontario, Canada, like, you know, Costco's and Walmart's were kind of few and far between. And so we were relying on like, okay, where's the next grocery store? Cause like we're running out of fresh fruits and vegetables here. And like, we're going to be living on Mr. Noodles for the next two weeks and we can't find any food. And that prayer, like give us this day, our daily bread. And all of the different elements of the things that we rely on, it was just, I was just kept brought back to the, to the Israelites asking God 
for their help. Like, God, would you provide from like the manna from heaven? And in a similar way, when we were living in this, our conver converted school bus for two months, like I just kept being brought back to that. Like, Lord, would you provide? Like, we're going to need some water. Like, would you just help us to find it? Help us to provide. We need some sun. We need whatever it is that we need. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. I was also just reminded, you know, the gospel of Matthew chapter eight, where Jesus says this, he says, you know, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. And our school bus, you know, we're completely self-sufficient. Like this is where we sleep. This is where we eat. We travel in it. Like we have everything that we need. We just kind of pull up and we're ready to go. And it was just kind of reminded, like, we never really knew where we were going to sleep any particular night. Like even later in, the, in the, to the day, in the afternoon, we'd be like, I don't know where we're going to sleep tonight. I have no idea. And it was just reminded of that. Like Jesus, like he had, the son of man has no place to lay his head and just relying on God, even for that. Like, God, would you give us a safe place where we can park and sleep for the night? We didn't really park in campgrounds. Um, we, I think we spent two nights out of like, out of eight weeks, we spent two nights in a campground and the rest of the time we just like found places to sleep. And it was very awesome to be able to park in one of the most, you know, magnificent places of God's creation, looking up at the stars in awe and wonder and just saying like, God, thank you so much for this. Thank you for providing for us. The third thing I realized is that, man, like when you drive a bright blue school bus, like you really stand out. Like I sort of thought, okay, like it's a bit weird. You know, we drive a school bus, it's converted. You know, people are probably going to look a little bit, but I didn't realize how much we were going to stand out. Like every time we'd be parked uh, at a park or a parking lot or like, you know, just getting groceries somewhere, like people would be constantly just walking by with their phones and taking pictures or like coming up to the bus and knocking on the door. I think one time we had the door open because it was so hot and a lady just like walked right up on the bus. And we're like, oh my goodness. Like, hey, this is our home. You know, and like people are just like, like asking questions and not in a way that's like made us feel like oh we're celebrities or anything like that no it was more like people were just sincerely curious about this lifestyle like why on earth would you decide to live in a converted school bus like why would you do that you know people were kind of in awe of like wow this like this is so cool like what an opportunity and I think my wife and I felt that as you know as a couple in our marriage and, and as a family is like what an opportunity it is that we can spend such time together as a family traveling spending family time together and doing ministry like being able to have this time together is just like was such a blessing and then being able to encounter and meet the people that we met along the way like we met this guy and he was uh he used to be a, a catholic and uh he you know you could tell he was just I don't know, searching or seeking. And he was into different kinds of spiritualities. But like, I mean, like we're on the side of like Lake Superior, one of the biggest lakes, uh, great lakes in North America. And here we are, we're just like, just praying together. I'm like, what a gift that is. Like to have that opportunity that the Lord would ordain such a way for us to come and to connect and to like breathe his life and his soul into this man. Like what an awesome opportunity. And I remember another opportunity that I had to pray with somebody. We were at a Walmart parking lot. We were getting groceries and this Muslim man walked up to the bus. I could tell he was taking pictures and he was sort of curious and interested. And I went out and I said, hi, how you doing? And, and, and you know, he, he was sharing with me, you know, some of the struggles of his life. And I said like, hey, you know, I don't know if you're comfortable with this or not, but I would love to pray with you. You know, I'm a Catholic. I know you're Muslim. And he's like, well, I don't know. How do we do this? And I said, why don't you pray the way that you pray? And then I'll pray the way that I pray. And we're both praying to the God of Abraham. And we'll, you know, and, and I just, I could tell that God was up to something. He was doing something in the lives of these people. And so standing out, you know, what I've come to realize, it's, it's not a bad thing. Actually, as Christians, we're meant to stand out. We're meant to be different. And driving a bright blue school bus really kind of taught me that lesson that like, we're, as Christians, we're meant to look a little different than the rest of the world. And I think when we do that, we act kind of like a transcendental, right? People being drawn to the beauty, truth, and goodness. Like they see that. They see somebody living a holy, virtuous life like St. Teresa of Calcutta, and they're drawn to that. And so it was just a reminder for me, like in my own Christian journey, in my own faith life is like, you know what? We're meant to stand out. We're meant to be different. I think people are going to be drawn to that because they're seeking that as well for themselves. The fourth thing that I realized is that, man, we have so little time with our kids. You know, like we're counting down the years that we have left with our oldest. And we're like, you know, almost in, in tears at the thought of like, like, wow, like that's we only have a limited amount of time. And so how are we going to spend it with them? Like, what are the things that we want to do? And realizing that like, man, I, I don't want to um, waste the, the years that I have with my kids trying to be overly ambitious with my own career or with the, the goals and the things that I want to do at the expense 
of what it's going to cost our family life. And so, you know, just being refreshed and being renewed in that, the idea of like, you know what, like our kids are a gift and I just want to spend as much time with them as I can as the Lord has given to us. Fifth thing that uh, I realized through this trip was like, there is so much of the world to see. There's so much of God's beautiful creation that he's placed before us. And I can't help but like when we see something magnificent, like a beautiful waterfall or the Rocky Mountains or the stars on the sky or beautiful sunset or sunrise, like it's like it's breathtaking and it leaves us in wonder and awe of his creation. And I want my kids to be able to have an appreciation for that at some point in their life. Maybe they're not right there yet, <laughs> but that's okay. And I, I want to expose them to that just so that they can recognize that God is everywhere. Like we have the, the gift of receiving him in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and we can encounter him in the poor, and we can encounter him in all of creation and in one another. And I want to expose them to that. You know, and I'm going to just close with this quote from St. Augustine. He said this, you know, the world is a book and those who do not travel read only one page. Man, I want to see God's creation. I want to read the whole book, as much of the book as I'm able to get through this side of heaven. And so this um, trip, living in a converted school bus for two months, it really taught me just a lot. It gave me a lot of perspective uh, and gratitude of what God has done in my life and what he is doing and what he's calling us to. If you have a similar story about your own experience with traveling or spending family time together, something weird and wild that you did and you definitely saw God at work, I, I would love for you to share your story in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with somebody else who might be inspired by it. I'd be so grateful if you'd consider bringing me to your event, whether it's Catholic school or parish mission, some kind of conference or retreat. would love to see you out on the road. May God bless you.